you're still watching this, I'm sorry. You're never going to get that minute 15 back. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> Recently, my friend Chris Perkins and I drove a 1993 Fiat Panda 4x4 to Radwood, Austin on a 400 mile road trip that seemed hopeless from the start. It's a slow car with 47 horsepower on big highways surrounded by big trucks. And not only that, the condition of this car left us burdened by the looming threat of catastrophic failure. Before we can talk about the trip, we have to talk about what this is. The Fiat Panda 4x4 debuted in June 1983 as a spin-off model from the wildly popular Fiat Panda City Car designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro. That's a name I've read a million times but never said out loud. The Panda was already a cultural phenomenon in Europe, and the stories from its design process have become legends of automotive trivia lore. For example, Giugiaro designed it to have completely flat glass for all windows to save manufacturing cost, and so they're interchangeable between the left and right sides. But legend has it that the glass actually cost more, at least initially, because Fiat suppliers only had the tooling to produce curved glass. The Panda 4x4 model built upon the standard Panda with real off-road capability. It's the first transverse engine production car to have a four-wheel drive system, and the drivetrain was supplied by Steyr Puke, better known for building the Mercedes G-Wagon. The original Panda was so popular that it stuck around in production until May 2003, making it one of Europe's longest-lasting automotive designs. The rugged 4x4 version is the one to have if you're after the ultimate utilitarian, form-follows-function, tough-as-nails European box. So it's a pretty robust car. This Panda belongs to my friend Tom, who bought it last year and had it shipped over from Italy. It's had a bit of service and some cosmetic upgrades, but the history is mostly unknown and it's been sitting since last fall, around the time Radwood Austin was originally scheduled to happen. Tom let us borrow the car because he thought it would be funny and because this blue and teal wonder belonged at Radwood. Chris Perkins came down from New York to co-drive with me for largely the same reasons. My excitement about the trip hit a snag when I opened the hood and noticed that the coolant looked like chocolate milk, which is probably bad. So I sent a photo of the coolant situation to Tom, but he was pretty relaxed and jokey about it. I also included our friend Jordan by accident, who is an actual expert mechanic on European cars, and he seemed very concerned. <coughs> I decided to go ahead anyway. I have just enough mechanical sympathy to spend every single mile worrying about the car, but not enough to call the trip off. We started running into high temperatures 20 minutes after we left my house. The needle climbed steadily, but it stayed just outside the red section of the gauge at around 110 degrees Celsius, so we pressed on. I think part of loving weird old cars means that eventually you find yourself on a drive where your eyes are just glued watching the temp gauge and you have to adjust your driving to try to keep it happy, and that's what this was. We took a nice route that kept us off the interstates for about half of the trip, but some freeway driving was unavoidable. The Panda isn't as bad as you would think on the highway surrounded by larger vehicles. You sit up high and the outward visibility is excellent, so you kind of forget you're in such a small car until you hit the limiter at 72 miles an hour. We approached Austin in the peak of afternoon heat, and that's when we worried most about how hot the car was running. The temp gauge was behaving weirdly, almost as if it was installed backwards, with the temps cooling off when we slowed down and sat at stoplights and getting hot again when we cruised at 50 miles an hour. We don't know what RPM the engine was spinning at, but we're pretty sure it wasn't redline. Also worryingly, we didn't think the radiator fan was switching on. It was exhausting, it was hot both for us and for the Panda, and it was stressful, but we made it. We checked the oil, which looked fine, and checked the brown sludge in the coolant reservoir, which was still terrible. The next morning, we drove to Radwood at Circuit of the Americas. At 7 a.m. when we left, the ambient temperature was the lowest we would see all weekend, but despite that, the temp needle shot up to 110 degrees Celsius within 10 minutes of our drive, which was alarming. It also ran terribly before it got up to temp with reduced power and frequent stumbles in power delivery until it finally warmed up. When we made it to Radwood, we were just relieved that we could park it and wouldn't have to drive it again for at least six more hours. Radwood itself was excellent with a huge turnout and a great venue that made it totally worth the trip.
Panda was a hit with attendees, many of whom had never seen a Panda 4x4 before. Who writes this? Many of whom had never previously seen one of these cars, and had only heard of the legend of our tiny off-roader. But when Chris couldn't get the tailgate to latch, that's when it drew the biggest crowds, with nearly everyone, including myself, offering plenty of unhelpful advice and insight. It's all about the follow-through. Yeah. Follow I don't think you are. Chris eventually repaired the latch, but I managed to break it again before our trip home, and we had to use bungee cords to hold it closed for the rest of the weekend. While at Radwood, we added more coolant, and our pal Art speculated that our brown sludge was probably caused by rust in the coolant lines, and not a blown head gasket, which we found encouraging. After the show, I was confident the car would make it home, but in a reversal of roles, Chris became a lot more concerned. We bought a few gallons of distilled water and a drain pan in case we needed to do an emergency roadside coolant flush. In worst case, we thought we could make periodic stops to let it cool during the 180 mile drive back to Houston. We were losing a lot more water than we realized, so we added a full gallon of distilled water to the tank, and that helped, if nothing else, maybe we were diluting the sludge that was in there into something closely resembling a liquid. On the return drive, the Panda actually ran beautifully. The temp stayed around 90 degrees Celsius, and we even witnessed the fan running. We felt so good about how the Panda was performing that we made some extra photo stops. The Panda was fun again. And then about 25 miles outside of Houston, the temp started rising on the interstate. Figuring it was due for more water, we stopped for lunch to let it cool off so we could add another half gallon, but that didn't really help and it continued to run hot. In the last mile before we gave it back to Tom, the idle shot up to a worrying but unknown amount. And then blissfully, we gave it to Tom and it was someone else's problem. Thanks, Tom. Last year, I wrote an article about this car and I concluded it by saying that the Panda 4x4 is guaranteed to put a smile on your face every time you drive it. Now I might walk that statement back just a little bit, but I'll go as far as to say we didn't break it or make it worse, uh, aside from the tailgate. So I want to thank Tom for the opportunity to use the Panda, and also Chris Perkins for joining me on this trip. If I had been by myself, which was the original plan, I would be alone with my anxieties and worrying about every little sound or imagining irregularities that weren't there, so it was helpful to talk and rationalize the situation with a co-driver. And I'll also thank another Chris, Chris Wynn, who patiently followed us at 60 miles an hour to make sure we made it to Austin. So I'll end this here. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and comment and subscribe. And if you're going to comment to tell me that I shouldn't have taken this car on a road trip without servicing it first, I'll stop you right there. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> this stupid t-shirt that I made for Radwood is available for sale on my website. Um, so that I'll have the link below. And if it's not, then it's because it was taken down for copyright things. <laughs>